Hello everyone, I'm Mish and in today's video I'll be using and reviewing the latest tool in my adventuring kit, the EB3A Portable Power Station by Bluetti. Now folks, I've been wanting to add a portable power station to my traveling kit ever since I saw a fellow metal detectorist and treasure hunter, Nora Svet, use one in her videos. I think the first one was back in 2021. Now at the time, my state was in lockdown. We couldn't travel even if we wanted to. So I kind of shelved the idea of owning one at that time. Thankfully, this is no longer a factor. We are free to roam wherever we please around the country. So I'm hoping to take this station with me on many adventures throughout 2023 and hopefully I can bring you along as well. Now in the interests of full transparency, I want you to know that Bluidy have kindly sent me this EB3A unit, as well as the accompanying PV120 portable solar panel in exchange for an open and honest review. I have only accepted this deal as I feel this product has genuine relevance for my audience and I believe it will further enhance the content that I bring you this year. While I will be reviewing the Australian version of this unit today, be aware that there are US and European versions of this unit online. There may be some differences in the power draw, particularly with the AC output. However, most of the information I provide in this video should still be relevant for you. The EB3A is the most compact model in Bluetti's current range of portable power stations. It is also one of the newest, having released in June 2022. It has a maximum 600 watt output and it has a 268 watt hour capacity battery. Now I'm not going to put an electrician's hat on here. This is sort of getting out of my area of expertise. This is not a metal detecting topic. However, the watt hours measurement is basically trying to show us how long we could run a certain wattage of device using that capacity of battery. Now to use the 268 watt hour example here, if I were to run a 100 watt device, it's gonna run for probably two, two and a half hours until it's depleted. Thankfully, we don't need to remember any of this because the screen of the EB3A will actually show us how much runtime it's got left while it's powering up some devices. And conversely, if there's power running into the machine, it will tell us how long until the EB3A is fully charged once more. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of the equation. So the battery in the EB3A is what we call a lithium iron phosphate battery or Life PO4, I think I got that right. Long story short, it's not one of those lithium batteries that's known for heating up and exploding randomly. So that's always good to know. It's actually a fairly incombustible compound and it's considered one of the safest compounds of lithium battery. The other good thing about the lithium iron phosphate batteries is that they last really well. So the EB3A is rated to recharge for over 2,500 cycles before it will degrade down to 80% of its original maximum battery capacity. So that's pretty awesome. I think it would take me a very long time to go through 2,500 life cycles of this product. So I can see myself getting really good value out of this device. So now that we know what the EB3A is and what it's made of, we really need to talk about what it can actually do for both myself and for you guys. So it is a portable power station. It powers stuff. Now what stuff? That's entirely up to you. I would recommend, however, that you don't try and use really high powered devices with this. Don't go plugging in your hairdryer or anything like that. It is the 600 watt model. It's designed for maybe a multitude of lower powered devices. But anyway, we'll go over the outputs that are on the EB3A. So we do have a 12 volt DC jack that is like the cigarette plug jack in your car. We've got two DC barrel jacks. We've got two USB-A ports. We've got one USB-C port. Now that is a higher wattage port. It caps out at 100 watt. We've got a standard AC jack. So again, this is the Australian version. It's just got one jack, 220 to 240 volt. And last but not least, we have a 15 watt wireless charging output located on top of the unit. And then it's also got a light built in on the front as well. Now this light can be set to what Bluetti calls medium, it can be set to high, and also it can be set to have a strobe function. So it does flash SOS. You could use that obviously if you're in trouble, 
you could use it to signify that your other half needs to put another coffee on the campfire. I mean, your mileage may vary with that one. I know which version I'm probably more likely to use. There are also a multitude of ways that you can recharge the EB3A when it needs a bit of power back. So the most common and standard way, I guess, would be the included AC cable. So just plug it straight back into the wall when you get home. It's also got a jack for charging with a solar panel up to 200 watt solar panel. Now I've got a 120 watt solar panel here for the purposes of review. So you will see that in my video. You can also charge the EB3A off a car charger. So again, that kind of 12 volt cigarette plug cable. Now I will say that that cable is not included with this unit. It is available for separate purchase on Blue Eddy's website. I feel like that was probably a little bit of a miss. I feel like including that in the box might have been a good idea as people are typically going to use this unit when they're traveling. Um, you can also recharge the EB3A with a multitude of these different methods. Um, there are some that can be used in combination and there are some that can be used in what they call a turbocharge mode. So using the app, you can actually increase the wattage going into the unit to charge it a little bit quicker on certain methods. It does say in the app that this is not recommended for frequent use as it will degrade the battery of the unit a little bit faster. So probably something that I'd avoid unless you really needed to recharge the device in a hurry. But anyway, enough waffling on. I think we need to go and test this with some scenarios that I would encounter in the wild. Obviously your scenarios may be different to mine, but hopefully this gives you an idea as to what you could potentially use the device for. Let's go. Well folks, I'm on location at a little camping ground. I can't wait to set up the EB3A and put it through its paces. But first, I think you and I need to make a copy. There's some liquid gold right there. Alrighty folks, let the real world tests begin. So I'm going to recreate two scenarios today that I might realistically encounter if I go camping away. So this one is what I'd like to lovingly call detector estate night. Now this is a metal detecting channel. I go off metal detecting all the time. We're making the assumption here that my husband and I have gone away for a weekend of metal detecting. We need to recharge our devices as well as our phones just to get through the weekend. So in this particular scenario, the devices I'm going to plug in, we've got two metal detectors, we've got two pin pointers, we've got two phones, we've got a GoPro, and uh, of course we've got the EB3A unit to plug everything into, and we've got the solar panel, which I may or may not need for this scenario. You may have noticed that all of these devices are actually USB powered. So my assumption here is that it's not going to provide too much strain on this unit. I believe we might actually be able to get by for a weekend with this unit without even needing to recharge it off the solar. But I'm gonna fire up the companion app for this device so that you can see on the screen as I'm plugging everything in, what the power draw is like on this device. And then we'll see maybe, we might hook up the solar, see whether the input from that actually offsets the draw of these devices. Alrighty guys, I've just fired the companion app up now. So you should be able to see on the right hand side of the screen, just some information about what's going in and out of the device, which at the moment is absolutely nothing. Now I have turned on both the DC and the AC sections of the power unit. I can turn them on and off remotely through the app. So if you watch the app now, I'll turn the DC off. So nothing would charge here, even if it were plugged in right now. However, we'll turn that back on because obviously we want to see some real world results here. We'll start with our little GoPro. We'll put that into the DC adapter. Yep, so we can see there's a power draw starting there already. We've got about eight watts coming out. So we've got our detectors here. 
one and two using the USB A ports for those and we can see once again the power's jumped a little bit on the DC we've got one more DC item we're going to plug in which is one of our iPhones which definitely needs some charge I've not got anything for the DC barrel jacks in either of these tests so your mileage may vary with those but we'll move down to the AC port now where we've got our little USB hub and we're going to chuck our two pin pointers in so these two here let's plug those in I'm impressed I'm actually getting the USBs up the right way for a change that never happens all right, so that is still quite a modest little drawer off this unit. I feel like the solar panel at the moment would absolutely smash that usage and probably continue to charge the unit beyond that as well. That is awesome, but there is one more device to plop on and it means I won't be able to see the app for a moment. So we'll pop this up on the wireless charging pad. I felt that go on charge, but it only went up marginally. So I think a few of these devices are just trickle charging at this point. But even if they were to add another 40, 50 watt of usage onto the device, I'm still going to get a good couple of hours or more, well, probably four or five hours of charge off the device. Now, I will need to take my phone off the top briefly because if I have a look at the screen, which may be hard for you to see, however, it is telling me that with all of these devices plugged in right now and charging at the rate that they're charging we're looking at over eight hours of charge remaining on the Blue Eddy before this power station goes flat so that's pretty impressive all of these are devices are going to well and truly charge in that time and furthermore once some of these devices fully charge they stop pulling power off the unit so it will last even longer than that for the remaining devices that still need to charge up so I really don't think I would need the solar panel in this particular scenario, but nonetheless, we might plug it in for the second scenario and just see how much power goes into the unit. Alrighty guys, we are on to the second and final round of my testing of the EB3A today. So this is another scenario that I might realistically encounter. And in fact, I might encounter this one after the first one so let's just say I have gone on that detecting weekend I've charged up the detectors the pin pointers all of that I may have gotten the solar panel out and recharged the EB3A to full and now I need to start the editing process so I need to recharge all of my camera batteries I need to actually get the laptop out and start editing there might be a drone battery I need to recharge and I might need to recharge the coffee machine as well so here's the devices I'm plugging in in this round of course, we've got the coffee machine, most important device here. We've got an iPhone. We've got batteries for my Sony camera. We've also, instead of just plugging in the GoPro with one battery, we're going to charge three GoPro batteries all at once. We've got the laptop and we've got the drone. So I'm just going to charge one drone battery. We're gonna plug it into the AC port. So I think this will use a little bit more power draw than the first scenario as for how much. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe place a bet. How many watts of power will all of these devices draw at the same time? I'll get plugging them in. Alrighty, I am watching the app intently now. You should see it on your screen too. We're going to start plugging in these devices. Plug in the camera batteries. And now the GoPro batteries are going in. So I'm watching the draw out of the corner of my eye. Yep, it's gone. To 25 watt now so we're already pretty close to the draw of the first scenario and we've only plugged three devices in so far so let's keep going we might stick this iPhone up on the top yep I felt that go on charge and it's trickling up a little bit more now we're pretty much bang on that first scenario we haven't plugged in the MacBook yet so let's give that a go now I'm expecting a bit of a jump here I know you won't be able to see the phone screen, but I need to keep an eye on it too. Okay, that is trickling up. I think that'll keep going up for a little while. So keep watching it on the screen and we will plug in the drone battery now. Excellent. Okay, where are we sitting now? Oh, that pretty much doubled the output. We're still climbing a little bit. I think the MacBook's still increasing its draw. If I were to have a look at the screen here, 
it's got 134 watts at the moment nice okay so I can see again on this screen which you might not be able to see too well it says I could charge this configuration for another 1.8 hours until it runs out so realistically that's probably enough to charge these devices back up but then I would probably need to look at charging the unit itself so this is probably a good scenario for me to start unpacking the solar panel and let's just see how much of that we can offset bearing in mind my solar panel is a 120 watt so we know that that's its absolute max input that it will do so it's not going to fully offset what's drawing now but it should well and truly extend the life of the EB3A in this scenario all right let's plug it in I've got the solar hooked up got the cable running towards my devices I haven't plugged it in yet because I want to give you a weather report so let's go to the sky it's a little bit overcast this is not ideal solar panel weather however as you can see the Sun's about to make an appearance so let's quickly plug this thing in and let's see what it's getting at the moment while the Sun slowly comes back out you should see in the app here an input start to happen which it is excellent 48 78 oh here we go we're starting to get some direct sun let's see what I can get up to the highest I've seen on this when I tested the other day was 109 watts Ooh, we're gonna get close bearing in mind it's a 120 watt panel so I don't expect it to go much above that 108 come on let's do it let's do it uh, <laughs> anyway we'll keep an eye on it but that's almost offsetting what I've got plugged in right now and bearing in mind that once things uh, charge up to full so for example the MacBook here once it's full it's going to reduce that draw by about 40 watts and therefore the solar is actually going to start charging the EB3A again I'm just having a look at the screen here in its current status with 105 watts going in and a bit over 100 going out let me have a look at the screen it reckons it could charge this current scenario with this level of sunlight for another 22 hours obviously it's not going to be sunny for the next 22 hours but that's still very promising for charging this device back up especially once I've unplugged all of these batteries and laptops and coffee machines and whatnot I should be able to charge up the device pretty quickly while I'm off grid that's fantastic but anyway speaking of things getting a bit sunny I really don't want to get sunburnt so we might pack up these devices and we might trot on home do a little bit of a wrap-up <laughs> that brings me to the end of this review I hope it's been enjoyable for you I hope you've taken something from this and look hopefully it's informed your decision on these kinds of products let me know what you think thank you again to Bluetti for sending me the EB3A portable power station as well as the PV120 solar panel for review I really do appreciate your faith in me producing this video and look I hope it's given everyone my honest thoughts on the device Feel free to drop me any comments in the comments section below. I'll answer them as best I can. In the meantime, guys, take care, stay safe, and I will catch you on my next adventure. Cheers.